Okay, here's the second classical game that we play today. And uh, we just develop the knight. Now this pawn move here, straight away I'm thinking I don't I don't know what it is. But in in my unusual repertoire of opening type situations, I understand what they're attempting to do. So I'm just wondering, do they know how to work it? So then they develop the knight. In my head, I said, I don't know if you work it like that because the unusual, you're meant to keep the unusual up uh, as you're going. But this was a little bit normal knight coming and attacking the pawn. So it felt fairly okay. We're just bringing our knight and protecting. So now we've got the four knights. He's got his unusual pawn on the other side of the board. So he's gone unusual, then he's just gone normal, normal. So in my head, he's lost a little bit of tempo in developing that unusual opening. So I'm looking to push through the center, as you know, just to try and obliterate the center. So we bring the bishop through, attacking the knight. He captures the pawn. So I know at that point in time, this might be pretty straightforward, but you never know. Sometimes people sacrifice pieces and then suddenly blam, you get some type of checkmate threat going on. So we bring the queen up and then the knight disappears back to where it came from. So it was a little bit strange, but I wasn't underestimating what the opponent could do we've got four pieces out at the minute the opponent has none he's got two pawns that have been pushed so i'm thinking just watch my back end watch my blind spots castle get safe another pawn push but behind that pawn is the rook so we can take the rook off the board the bishop attacks, so we could have taken the bishop or we can take the knight. Going for checks first in this capture, so that makes sense to me. And then they bring the bishop back. So then we attack their queen because the queen can't go anywhere and the bishop cannot come to protect and the king can't come in the front to protect the queen. So the opponent deliberated for a while and basically they left the game. So that was a bit of positional play which the opponent gave to us from these pawn maneuvers and the reversal of their pieces and not really establishing a, a firm attacking type position on the board. We'll go on to the next one. That's the answer process. That's what all players in chess are wanting to do. Um, even the ones that are just steady away with the openings and you know it's taken a while for a piece to be taken off the board they're still attempting to squish that king they're still attempting to get pieces off the board appropriately strategically they're still attempting to try and attack key spaces key pieces etc so they are all using the answer process everybody uses it differently because the essence of the game is to checkmate the opponent or to get them to capitulate or to basically just um, get them to resign of some sort. Okay, so we're looking at the analysis of the long play games, classical games that I played today. And we played about eight games. I'm probably gonna go through maybe about three of them just to have a look at the answer process and how we're trying to keep keep it developing and keeping it working for us and as we've always said we, we haven't created this um the answer process cannot be refuted because it is the art of chess um as it's been known for many 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 years so the concepts and the candidate type situations such as like the the checks captures threats supporting blocking those types of things we just um for our personal use we added we've added in position at the front end and position at the back end of those candidate selections just to help us really formulate 
our analysis as best possible so that we're hopefully trying to find the best moves but realistically it's looking at the key things for the answer which are to put pressure on the king or the king area put pressure on key pieces key squares put checks on higher pieces with lesser pieces at the end of the day we'll want to either get pieces removed off the board so the opponent can't actually continue or they leave the game they capitulate or we get some type of checkmate pattern situation on the opponent idea is we're not rushing to get these things we want to utilize as many concepts as we want to really select the right move trying to manage the emotional side of things instead of relying so much on the what's the word now the logical aspect bring in the creative stuff as well but don't let the creative thinking take over and get a nice balance between the two once you've made an anal analysis analysis then it's then rewriting that analysis to make sure that you're definitely making the right move or even the better move before you make the move it's very hard to do when you're actually in the game because you feel that it is the right move at that time and then once you've made the move then you see another pattern or you see another piece of gold that you could have taken so we're at this nice comfortable stage where we really want to sit back and say right okay after all is said and done did we actually make the right move now when we say did we actually make the right move this is the moment where we're going to say to ourselves well let's challenge that and say well okay i definitely want to make the right move so before you even put your hand on the piece we have to question definitely is this the right move so we're going to go through these um, classical uh, games just to have a look at how we're attempting to do that we've got our friend the um, gauge bar here to tell us that look hey guys you don't know what you're doing and um, if they've got some little tidbits of information definitely going to jump on it if it's talking a load of twaddle because it's nowhere made i'm actually going to play it like that then we'll ignore that and move on but we'll challenge it as we're going through so we play black in this game and so we push forward and block the pawn i've been thinking of trying to do different types of responses to certain things but the reason why i do the moves in the way that i do them is because for all these years I've come to the answer process and I've you tried to loot, utilize many different opening type things against many different types of openings that the opponent um, can bring to the table and I've come up with the fact that well okay simple is as simple does and that's it's simple enough it's effective enough it does the job so it's managing these squares here it's it's blocking this pawn from um, further advancing up the board to control more space so it's quite cru quite a crucial piece of movement so we develop the knight obviously looking to uh, get space towards uh, castling really they develop their knight so we've gone for the four knights at this moment then they develop their bishop obviously looks like the target in this wheat pawn here with the potential for the knight coming here because the only piece that's protecting is the queen so we bring our bishop through just making a bit of space and uh, looking to basically take that knight off the board if need be not too worried if they did come down here at this stage so they haven't overfought the situation they've just done a knee-jerk reaction and attacked the bishop so we take this knight off the board because of the position of the pawns i mean basically one of the pawns is going to be opening up kind of weakening the area a bit probably expect this one to open up because it'll open up the bishop but he takes with the far pawn so at this point in time i'm saying to myself well it looks like i think i might be going queenside castling if i have to castle because it's got a nice half open file here i don't really want any pressure putting onto my king i've seen the evaluation before where the computer's gone don't worry about this 
castle on the king's side, don't worry about it. But I'm not as good as a computer, so I just use my kind of common sense to say, well, they've got an open track right down there. That's like a motorway. A motorway just coming right through into your house. So he moves his bishop back. So now we start uh, mobilizing to attempt to just give space for the bishop. Now the knight's down. Because he's got the attack on this pawn, as we mentioned before. So the bishop comes back. So it's going to be an okay exchange, really. The pawn takes. If the knight took, then we take the knight. So that looked okay for us. And at that moment, I thought, there's a little bit of a tempo win here because of that movement. And I don't think the opponent realized that they would lose that time. They've not lost, I'm not up, um, a pawn or anything, but they've lost that moment in time with the bishop taking, etc. Now they're having to push through the center because this bishop isn't developed and they're trying to claw that time back. But we've got a nice cluster of pawns in the center here. So that can easily manage that situation. So now we just want to get rid of the knight and they actually take and the pawn is on our knight so we just take his knight off the board so it's an even exchange as far as i can see and then nobody's up at this moment in time but we're up positionally and i did feel that in the game and what i felt was i don't think i'm going kingside castling <laughs> so he starts pushing his pawn down but the pawn doesn't have any protection on so they move their dead quick and I'm like thinking, I don't know, let's take. Obviously, I took a, I felt like I took a while taking the pawn. It might not have been a while, but I did look to see, well, what are these gambit things? You've got to be careful, but there's nothing really that can cause any damage there. So I took. Now his queen's coming down to face our king area. So decided to just bring the knight down block all that activity i was trying to make sure he didn't have any access through here now he's looking to put pressure on the knight as we said that pressure there's no way made i'm going kingside castling computer probably would just castle but um i'm not full of them apples so we bring the queen into the game looking to start attacking their queen i mean going to this spot here with a check on the king should see their queen off but going around the back first is a bit of an interesting situation. So that's putting more pressure now on their area. And it's that, it was that loss in tempo of developing their pieces, especially with the bishop capturing, then the knight not really being able to do anything stuck in the center. This poor bishop wasn't really in the game. So the pieces weren't working together as best possible. So I was fairly comfortable. So it comes to attack, so we can bring the rook now. So we'll bring the rook down, obviously for an x-ray through to the queen if they're looking to get a bit fancy and forget themselves. Queen moves back, so again he's losing more tempo and time, which I'm feeling fairly comfortable with. So now I can castle kingside, because there's nothing, there's nothing major coming to me now. I could move here and attack his queen. I can bring my queen up, I can do all sorts i've got like a two on one here on this pawn there's stuff going off which is more positive for us it goes greedy munching but we've got bigger fish to fry doubling here did consider taking this pawn but the rook is just going to be the center of the board if he takes then the queen can take but then his queen has got some devastation um it, maybe before then if the rook was here it may have worked let's just skip it back and see what would have happened so they took the pawn i was thinking of it but i don't think shit. so if he takes i don't think there's anything too major is there was he taking some it gets a pawn here um bishop can take the pawn Queen takes the pawn. Ooh, we're definitely winning here, aren't we? If the queen takes the pawn, we go there, like the arrow said. And then that's a bit of a problem for them, isn't it? Because boom, and then 
boom situation, but it's not winning. He goes here. Yeah, it's a bit of work that though, isn't it? That's a bit of work. No, I think we went for the nice safe option. It's a bit of work that. So doubling the rooks can put pressure now. See, the computer doesn't even like this um, safe, safe way that we actually did it. I mean, it's only minus 3.9. It's moved the king, so we put a check on the king. He doesn't like this either. Minus, it's only minus four. Wow, I thought that was pretty nifty. And at that point, the opponent resigned. But the computer's saying, well, I know it's minus four point thingy. I thought it was better than that. I thought it was better than that. It's saying D2. Most humans don't go facing the queen though, did they? they'd go here, but then obviously it get checked. Me did, maybe. Yeah, so if he goes there, then obviously we take the rook with a check. And that's pretty nice then. Oh, now it's on my side. <laughs> now it's on my side. Right, okay. Well, it took a while getting there then, didn't it? Okay, maybe the rook comes there. That's what it's showing. It did say King D. I oh, don't know. Maybe not. Right. Yes. Yeah, so. Uh, do, 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 do. In fact, this is the position I saw when I was playing. I was like thinking, well, he can do that. And what do I realistically do from there? I mean, there's these types of situations. Could come here, but I can't really. Get a check on. Oh god, minus two. That's terrible. Oh, the bishop attacking the queen. See, so it's not over, is it? It's the, he could have played on. I think he'd have done quite well. We're minus two now. So we dropped from like minus whatever it was, nine, ten. Hmm. Interesting situation. Where would I go then? Psh, psh, psh. He brought his bishop there. I go back up and attack his rook. So he's on our rook there with his rook, but we can take that rook off the board. So probably stay off of. Let's go here. Protecting the pawn, but I'm not really interested in protecting the pawn. I want to get to his king. And then it's take and then oh no he's got a back ranker on me i've got the knight protecting but oh that's shabby does it does he do that though <clears throat> don't know if he'd waste his time to Ooh, this is nice bishop well, bishop will take queen will take so we're clawing it back up to minus five okay we would have had to work but it was doable okay so that was a nice interesting game there to self teaching my answer process cheers okay here's the next classical game just working on the analysis so we push through the center and capture because we like to obliterate that center simple as it doesn't mean we don't understand about locking down the center if we have to um, if you've seen my earlier videos about um, why the answer was created and well and how it was how it was formulated um, you'll see in those earlier games I was like the lockdown master not master but you know um, I was always in positions of lockdown and the games were so dry and then the you know I, I'll lose one pawn and then that one pawn would be the detriment of the rest of the game but I'd be there just slowly but surely stalwartly playing through to the end with some attempt at um, gaining an advantage but one pawn I'd always kind of lose by one pawn in, in most of the um, serious games so that was really quite annoying and that's when I thought, well, okay, I always seem to tend to lose a pawn. So why don't we just start taking pieces off the board early on 
and then potentially I might not lose a pawn <laughs> and um, it's harder for the opponent to then basically gain advantage against me but we do it strategically the capturing of the pieces when we're not just doing it will it willy-nilly um, we're trying to improve the position on the board because we're positional players we like to have a good position and even if we've a piece down we want to improve our position so that at least then every piece is working together towards the same goal then it won't matter how many pieces the opponent's got on the board because if they're not in the right position they're not going to cause us any damage that's the psychology anyway so the queen captured we brought our knight through smaller piece attacking a higher piece so he's losing a bit of tempo by bringing the queen back as you can see he hasn't got any pieces developed it's the smallest of details that's all that count really so he starts bringing his knight across blocking his queen and we castle all the bases covered so we bring the bishop back and um, we could have come inwards but i'm feeling this is fairly strong even if he did this excuse me pawn move i believe this bishop is in a nice position anyway because when things get traded off excuse me they can forget about the sleeping bishop and the bishop comes down to attack our knights gauge bar has given us plus 7.3 and we grab the pawn if you can see it's a very simple pattern so if he takes then the knight comes here and the bishop doesn't have anything protecting you can only do it when the bishop doesn't have anything protecting it obviously yep so we just did sit there for a tiny bit and went for it so then that gave the check on the king now the king is all airy and it's getting even more airy by coming down to actually attack the knight which i'm surprised at so our queen gets into the game it's closer towards the king and their queen comes down looking to i believe obviously thought that it was coming to take the knight but he's landed right in the pathway of our knight if i was moving dead quick obviously i might not have seen that so we grab the queen with a check on his king and at that point the opponent resigned so that's an interesting development process with using utilizing the answer process utilizing attacking the key spaces the key key areas um, around the king spotting those weaknesses and then taking advantage of those weaknesses because throughout many of my games those types of positions i probably would not have seen i know i would have done something else you know that type of stuff and even now you know when you do the evaluation afterwards the computer goes well you could have just done x y and z and it would have been over and you go wow why didn't i see that when you see it by the computer it looks simple yeah well most of the time sometimes when they do little mamby pamby paw moves and stuff which don't make any sense whatsoever but it makes sense later 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 on i'm only a four four move calculation type of person so that's all i'm thinking ahead as best possible um i might take it to the limit if i know it's all nailed on but it's just a move order thing but other than that really four is the max for me because you, you tend to forget the continuation so that was a fairly quick interesting game but it just highlights the answer process um to its uh, fullest effect i think in this one okay so this is the fourth classical game that we played um this will be the last one i mean i, I think i did two, two more and I, may, I might do them as well i'm not too sure my voice is going so i think i'll take a rest after this one so the opponent pushed through the center with the deep on and i did say to myself i'm going to try something different in this one because obviously we normally would just block the pawn here because it's tried and tested uh, you know in my head it can't be refuted it's a nice simple movement it's blocking here it's blocking the pawn from pushing further down but i want to see what they do with this situation 
So we develop the knight, obviously concentrating on trying to get castled. And develop the bishop. So we've just gone small potatoes, just waiting to see what actually happens. Um, logic dictates that it's eventually going to go here if nothing major is going to happen. So we castle king safety. So no big troubles there whatsoever. And we bring the pawn back up to the position that we like. So, you know, in essence, we've done what we normally do, but we've just done it a little bit later. That's all. All based on what the opponent did. If the opponent had done something, I was, I was basically kind of waiting for them to start pushing the pawns in the center just to see them overstretch or something like that, but that didn't happen. So, I didn't get to practice what I kind of wanted to see and work against something unusual so we're back into familiar territory we bring the knight up attacking their knight and now we can push on to their pawn trying to obliterate the center so we capture and they capture so now we're attacking around the center of the board so attacking the bishop and then we take the knight off the board so we're trying to cause disruption around that center as best possible Knight moves away, he's attacking this pawn, but the bishop is actually protecting there. And the queen takes the knight, but we take the bishop. So all this was a, what do you call it, like a set player thing for me. Um, the knight moved with the next ray onto our knight, but we had sights of bigger fish. So we could capture. Now we're going to be facing his king area. Put a little bit of pressure onto his queen. So now our queen is looking to start attacking towards their king area. Gage bar doesn't like what we're planning. But at this moment in time, I'm comfortable with what we're planning. So they bring their knight back, blocking our queen from actually attacking that pawn. So we've got now a two on one with the bishop attacking the pawn here with the queen so we can take with the bishop and then we can take the rook off the board so it's improving our position in front of the king area so now we've just got to jostle getting this rook into the game obviously obvious sights is here just bring the bishop back looking to take the pawn off the board because there's nothing protecting it so we grab and we reposition attacking the queen and then take the queen off the ball because we're feeling fairly happy that our position now is really quite meaty. So we're now looking to trade down and they actually trade. So now we're just defending. It's easy for the bishop to have gone back but then his knight is on this pawn, is on this pawn but we can doubly protect it. So we start bringing the king up now, staying on the dark squares because he's got a white square bishop. And now we've got these two center pawns here that are looking to cause some trouble towards their king. Bishop puts the check on, so we're looking for those checks first. And now we're looking to attack their pawn. He doesn't drop it, doesn't fall for it. And then we capture, so we've got three pawns now in the center. And we take his knight off the board because now we're in a favorable position i don't think his king's going to be able to um, cope with these three pawns in the center of the board so we advance the king up start attacking start pushing so we push past now in the grand scheme of things you would think oh he's got those two linked pawns he's actually going to win out but as you know we have been practicing these types of things hard we don't get it right all the time um, in one of the workshops we had an end, ending like this and the opponent could have got a draw out of it you know if they'd brought their king back so we bring our king across they're pushing but they're not going to be fast enough from the calculation count they're not going to be quick enough because our pawn now is definitely the king couldn't come here couldn't come here to attack our pawn now it can't even go here because the pawn is so by the time he's done this move this would be queened 
So that kind of calculation is so crucial. Past pawns want to be pushed, knowing that this potentially is going all the way up and it's blocking the king. I think that was, it's quite a fantastic process. So they can continue. So now we've got the queen. So at this stage here now, it's all pretty straightforward and checkmate. So the value of the pawns and understanding the rhythm of the pawns in conjunction with your king and the timings, etc. It, it does save you from wasting a lot of time, you know, bringing my king here, panicking, thinking that these pawns are going to be too fast. You have to do the mental calculation yep so i did my count you know like we do the cal calculation do the count one two three four and then we know that we're going to win if i did the count and it wasn't going to be working i would have had to have readjusted my king to a better position but i don't think i would have put myself in the type of position anyway if i didn't think i had the count it's crucial